All right, in this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, blocks in AutoCAD, specifically dynamic blocks. Now, you know the value of blocks already. If I have a door that I want to insert in a wall, I build a block so that it's easier to make a selection, move things around, and I don't have to make all the individual selections. I can just grab one part of the object and get the whole thing. Uh, so that's very handy, but it's got very limited use because if I want this thing to be a different size or if I want it to flip the other way or be rotated, um, I want the swing direction to be uh, another orientation that I have to explode it or make some other manipulations to it. So we want to take the convenience of a block uh, one step further by giving it the basic geometry but allow some degree of editing uh, of that geometry to take place. Uh, and that's what dynamic blocks are all about. So we're going to look at how to build dynamic blocks. Uh, this is also a nice segue into Revit because uh, Revit uh, that you'll see later on is um, built on this premise of dynamic blocks. You've got one thing that has you know, the ability to be manipulated, has some parameters that you can change. Uh, more on that later. But uh, for dynamic blocks in AutoCAD, we're going to get rid of this one because it's not going to serve us any purpose. Eventually, just to show you where we're heading, we want to have a door that functions like a block, but we can make little manipulations to it. We can flip the direction in and out, we can change its size. And that's a much more useful block for our project. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have a whole bunch of doors the exact same size and orientation, so we want to have that ability to manipulate. So, first thing we got to do, of course, is build the geometry. Uh, I'm just going to use a doors layer here, and I'm going to go through this fairly quickly here. I'm just going to build some uh, door jams at first, just 50 millimeters by 150 millimeters, so roughly two inches by six inches. I'm just going to copy that over to the right, 950 millimeters, and then I'm going to move this element, and I'll just stretch it out to actually represent uh, the door frame, 750 millimeters more, and then I'll create an arc with start, center, end. And there's my arc. Okay, so I'm going to take these elements and create a block with them, uh, and then I'll add some uh, parameters and actions to give it the ability to be dynamic. Now, there's something else I want to add here. If you'll notice, uh, one of the extra little benefits of the way that this dynamic block has been built, um, I'll use this one right here. This door, not only does it have the ability to be you know, changed uh, in orientation and size, but if you notice, as I move it around, uh, I'll move it out here. You can see that that wall there is a set of continuous lines. And when I insert this door in place, it blocks those lines out so I don't have to do any trimming, which is another nice little convenience. Uh, the tool uh, that I use to uh, build that in is called a wipeout. So if I just type in wipeout, and I'm just going to, like a polyline, create just basically a rectangle here. C to close. Okay, and then I'm going to type in wipeout again. And down here at the bottom, notice there's uh, the options for frames or polyline. I'm going to click frames, and I'm going to turn that on. Now I can see my wipeout. Essentially what this does is it creates like a block, or um, like in Photoshop if you want to just kind of mask something out. So I'm going to click it again. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to use the draw order option to send it to back. Now you can see it slides in behind the door jams. Okay, so that's going to allow me to see the geometry of my door, um, but when I need it to, magenta lines there, those will disappear, and they'll also block out the wall lines behind them. So it gives me that uh, illusion, I guess, that it's been trimmed. Uh, I need to be aware, though, that the wipeout will block out anything right, uh, anything that it overlaps with. So I need to actually make this a little bit larger, otherwise I'll end up seeing half of the line weight of the wall. Uh, so I'm just going to move this out of the way and just stretch up 10 millimeters. And again, all that's going to do is it's just going to account for whatever sort of uh, line weight ink might be visible there and make sure that it gets uh, wiped out as well. So I'll move that back into place. Okay, and there are the elements for my dynamic door block. Uh, I'm going to change the color on this just uh, for visual ease here so I don't get messed up with the rest of the geometry. Okay, there we go. So I've got the door jam, 
the door panel, uh, door jam elements, the door panel, the door swing, and then I've got the wipeout there as well. Those are the elements I'm going to start building this dynamic block with. Um, so to do that, I type in B for block, and right away I'll name it. So I'll just call this dynamic, I'll even spell it correctly, dynamic door test. I will select the objects, all of these, and then make sure the open and block editor is clicked. And we're ready to go. Click OK. It's going to prompt me for an insertion base point, which I'll put just right at the hinge here. And then it launches the block editor. So in the block editor now, uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, working with the properties window open and then with this block authoring palettes window open. I'll need both of those. Um, try to give an equal screen real estate to both here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a parameter which will allow me to stretch the door so that, as you saw before, I've got the option to make the door different sizes. Uh, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, there's a lot of material here, and I just want to kind of cover the steps. Uh, and I don't want to go over too much more of the concept because this could uh, take quite a bit of time. So really quickly, I'm just going to add a linear parameter. I'm going to click on the hinge to start. I'm going to stretch across to the other side here where the door swing meets the other jam. I'm going to drag up to place the parameter title right here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that parameter and over in properties, it's given a default name of distance one. I'm going to change that to door width. Okay, and then I'm going to right click with that parameter selected. I clicked on the parameter, the blue ink there. I'm going to go to grip display and change that to one. Notice what that did is it took away the blue triangle on this side and it just left it here. This is where I want to kind of have the impact on the doors. I want to stretch on this side. So that's why I want just the grip over here. With that parameter in place, now I'm ready to select some or apply some actions to it. I'm going to do three of them. I'm going to do a stretch to this area. I'm going to scale the swing and I'm going to stretch the upper part of the door panel. Uh, so to start with stretch, select the parameter first, then the action point, which is going to be right here. And then I'm going to basically perform or, or go through the steps of performing a stretch command. So I'm going to do the stretch frame window. And then I'm going to select the objects that I want to be stretched. I'm going to select the wipeout, the jam, and then I'm going to hit enter. Okay, notice when I hit enter there, the action's done. It's complete, and it gives me this little action icon. It happens to be a stretch action. Um, now I'm going to add the second action, which again is going to be to increase the scale of the door swing. So I'm going to click scale. Again, select the parameter. And it goes right away into object selection. So I'll just click the swing and hit enter. And there's that second action. That's the scale action. And then the third one is going to be another stretch. And this one's going to affect the door panel. So just like I did with the other two, I'm going to select the parameter. And then I'm going to go to the same uh, parameter point that I used with the first stretch, which is going to be where the arc ends here, and the other jam. Click there. And just like the first time, I'm going to create a stretch frame around the top of the door. And then I'm going to select the door panel and hit enter. And then that one's done. So at the moment, I've got the uh, ability to stretch the size of my door out here. Now, there's a few other little modifications I have to make. Uh, and I'll show you why. Within the block editor, I've got the ability to test the block. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to run through a little trial here. Now, if I click that, again, it's a block. So the whole thing will select. Uh, that blue square is the insertion point, which I specified before you got everything going. And then over on the right here is that grip. If I drag that grip, notice it's going to change the size of the door. Uh, it's going to pull the far jam along, and it's going to scale the swing. So that looks right. Obviously, what doesn't look right here is uh, the door panel. Uh, now, what happened here is I stretch, I'm stretching the door uh, to the right. Um, and the door panel is kind of dragging along in the same direction. We don't want that. We want it to actually work kind of 90 degrees to that direction. So we know that's not working. Let's close the test block window. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select that last action. And over here in its properties, we're going to change in the overrides the angle offset to be 270 degrees. Okay. Uh, depending on how you have your unit set up, you might have your counterclockwise or clockwise in effect. So if 90 doesn't or 270 doesn't work, try 90. Um, I'm going to go with 270, and 
Now I'm going to test the block again. And now you'll notice that's working properly. The other thing we're going to do before we kind of move on to the, uh, the flipping and the other uh, elements of this dynamic block is we're going to change this so that it doesn't just give us these kind of strange uh, Tim Burton tiny doors here. Uh, we don't want to have infinite range on this door, of course. We're going to be wanting to use something standard to reflect what would happen in the, in the construction project. So rather than just have uh, any old value here, we want to set this to be uh, certain set values like a 2, 4 door, 2, 6, or 2, 8. Um, oh, I guess we're in, we're in metric. So more like an 800 millimeter door, an 850 millimeter door, 900 millimeter door. So we're going to, again, close the test block window. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the parameter. And now we want to go down in the properties to value set and the distance type is set to none by default. We're going to change that to list. And then underneath that where it says distance value list, 900 is listed there because that's what we started off with. We're going to click on the little ellipses there and we're going to add some other values. We're going to add a 750, add that, 800, and we'll just go in uh, increments of 50. And an 850, and we'll add a 950. And you might be wondering, well, you may have noticed when we pulled down that list, there was an option there for increment. We could have just done a 50 millimeter increment, but that would have been infinite values of 50. We want to have just certain values, so we're just going to actually specify exactly which values we want. We'll finish that off, and we will test it once again. And this time, notice that when I grab that blue grip, I get these tiny little hash marks here. So that is showing me where the predetermined door values are. So now I can jump up by 50 millimeters, and I can find just the value that I need. Okay, so that is working. Uh, we'll carry on in another uh, video here, but that just kind of gets us set up with the basic stretch command and gives you a look at how actions and parameters work. Uh, last thing to do here would be to save it, and then we will close the block editor, and we will take our door and we'll put it in the wall. Okay, and now, uh, in order for this wipeout thing to work, we have to actually make that wipeout frame disappear. So we'll type in wipeout, hit F for frame, and now we'll turn it off. You'll see those magenta lines disappear, and now we can test this out in the actual drawing environment here. You see that door change the size just like it's supposed to. So a lot more versatility than a standard block.